Welcome to another Faith Clinic Fellowship Podcast with me, Evangelist Terry Brunson. Thank you so much for you taking time to listen to this podcast. Jesus has assigned you to tune in. Listening to a podcast like this will make life's burdens lighter, spiritual pathways brighter, and faith in Jesus Christ a lot tighter. You can't miss if you work with this. Yes, sir. Faith is the stuff God used so you won't lose your blessing in getting saved. Faith is the key in the hand of prayer to open the gift of salvation to you to work other blessings through you. That sounded nice. Think I will say that twice. One more time for the money, honey. Faith is the key in the hand of prayer that will open the gift of salvation to you to work other blessings of God through you. Do you want to be saved? It take faith. Do you want to then be blessed after you get saved? It too takes faith. Faith is the key in the hand of prayer that opens God's storehouse of salvation with all blessings. When we order up salvation, we can supersede it to go with other blessings. Colossians 1 verse 12 says that God makes us worthy. God makes us. Were. They. To receive of every good blessing that comes with salvation. Colossians 1 verse 12 says, Giving thanks to the Father, who has made us meet or worthy, to be partakers of the all the inheritance of the saints in light of all the blessings attached to salvation. The topic we'll be studying is living above what we see. Level. That is a topic that we all need to know. Fo shu. When we face troubles, trials, and tribulations with afflictions. We need to look into an unseen world to see in faith that God in faith will give us the deliverance we stand in need. Indeed. Faith in action puts traction on our wheels to drive on God's roadways of miracles. I got to hit this so you can get this. Our topic is a faith topic that I have been anointed and appointed to present particularly to you. Distance over the airways is no barrier between you and God's faith teaching on living above sea level. By the web. And over the internet. We have become too. Global to stay local. I am in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania speaking to the world wide web of people a message from God to your ears. So, keep it locked right where you got it. Don't you click away from your opportunity to get in. Where you fit in on faith's destiny change. You can't miss. If you work with this, the topic is living above sea level. It's topic that will pick you up, turn you around, to place your feet on solid ground, to be a knowing, how to get going, to see right in the direction God is leading. Let's read. 2 Corinthians 4. 17-18. Our light affliction is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which we can see, but at the things which we cannot not see, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. When afflictions are pinpointing our way, we are commanded and demanded to look into an unseen world. To believe. To see that God is at work in the land of the living. The Bible teaches that there are two coexisting worlds setting side by side. One is a visible world and the other is an invisible world. The visible world is made up of material things that we can see with the natural eye. And the invisible world is made up of things the natural eye cannot see. These two worlds coexist. Side by side. Notice 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 gives an exploratory venture to see into an unseen world that shaped the world that we now see around us with our natural eyes. There is more to life than what can be seen. Things that are seen were made of things that cannot be seen. What's visible came from what's invisible. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Many live by the motto, seeing is believing. But that's the world's way of saying, the things that are real are the things that we can see. That is not so. 
It would be foolish to deny that there is an unseen spiritual world just because we cannot see it with the physical eye. The Bible teaches that we are to believe, to see things, what cannot be proven unto our senses. Faith is God's chosen method of seeing into an unseen world. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 27-28 says. 1. God has chosen to use unseen things of the world, which are foolish. To confound the wise. And 2. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, which are despised. And 3. God has chosen, things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. 1. God has chosen, 2. God has chosen, 3. God has chosen. This shows that God has chosen faith as His method to look into an unseen world, where we can believe to see rather than see to believe what God can do with things that seem impossible for us. Many people won't believe a thing until they see it. That takes no faith to do at all. If I see it to believe it, why have faith? The eye of faith believes to see rather than see to believe. In John 20 verse 25 Thomas a disciple of Jesus said, Except I see it, I will not believe it. Thomas's premise was of faith was set on a principle of most in the world today. Seeing is believing. But the word from God is. Believing is seeing. Psalms 27 verse 13 says. I had fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord working in the land of the living. Notice the phrase, unless I had believed to see? It's time for us to stretch our faith to believe to see, instead of see to believe. If we have to see a thing before we believe, that is not the faith of the Bible. Let us take a look at PowerPoint 1. For fun. Please write it down. The weakest ink is stronger than the strongest memory. PowerPoint 1. The reality of. An unseen world. There is a world unseen to the eye that is just as real as the things we can see. The Bible teaches that there is an invisible world. That is real. An unseen world hidden from the natural eye. All that can be seen in the natural world. God made from an unseen world. We understand this by faith. Hebrews 11 verse 3 says, Through faith we understand it was an unseen world that framed the seen world. So in truth things which are seen were made of things which did not appear. Before there was anything that we could see, there was the invisible world of the unseen. Faith released by God's voice to activate all that as we see now. Everything around a scene is temporal and is subject to change by the unseen eternal things of faith. The reality of the unseen world is evident of the things it made to be seen. That which is unseen is more real than that which is seen, because it was unseen things that made the seen things. The invisible world was here first, and it will be here last. The unseen world is real as can be. 2 Kings chapter 6 brings to light that there was an unseen world that demonstrated itself by the call of it by the prophet Elisha. Elisha pointed out the reality of the unseen world to his servant when troubled in the city of Dothan. 2 Kings 6 verses 16 to 18. Elisha prayed saying, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Elisha in a simple way prayed, Lord, open the eyes of my servant to see into the realm of the unseen, and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man to see heavenly chariots of fire round Elisha's house. Then the chief angel appeared to Elisha and asked, What is to be done to this army? Elisha commanded that blindness by put upon them all to miss their target. So the angel smote the army with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Elisha spoke in a commanding way by Isaiah 45 verse 11 for the angel of the unseen world to do as he commanded. The angel obeyed Elisha's command. Elisha's word commanded the angels to blind the soldiers. Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, There are angels of the Lord who are ministering spirits of the unseen world, sent forth to minister for them of the seen world who shall be heirs of salvation to command angels in times of afflictions? Psalm 34 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around them that fear him, and he delivers them from all their afflictions. During time that we face trouble, trails, tribulations, sickness, sorrows, pressures and perils, that prick us with plights of pain. We have helpers to turn to of an unseen world. We have to keep in mind. Who is really in charge of things unseen? 
It is the Lord. He fights for us who would take a look into the unseen world during a time of trouble. Nothing is mundane in God's domain. He supersedes all that succeeded in our seen world. God by the faith in an unseen world can still reverse affliction's curse and give rest to life's mess. There is a reality of an unseen world. PowerPoint 1 is done. Now here is PowerPoint 2. To see us through. On what to do. Write it down too. For the weakest ink is stronger than the strongest memory. PowerPoint 2. The resource of an unseen world. The resource of the unseen world is the force of faith. Living in the natural world limits our five senses to what we can see in this world, but there is a sense of faith as a resource to reach into the supernatural realms of an unseen world. Ephesians 3 verses 9 to 14 says, There is a resource that all men can see by a fellowship hidden in God by Jesus Christ to make manifest a power according to the eternal purpose in faith where we can have boldness and access with confidence as a resource of the unseen world when tribulations cause us to bow a knee unto the Father to cause our Lord Jesus Christ to show His power beyond the physical senses that we have. You may not fully catch all that is in this passage, but center in on Ephesians 3 verse 12 as the resource. The best resource of the unseen world is faith. Supernatural in substance. Faith where we can have boldness and access with confidence as a resource of the unseen world when tribulations cause us to bow a knee unto the Father to cause our Lord Jesus Christ to show His power beyond the physical senses. Faith becomes like scotch tape. When we put it on something, we cannot see it. But we know it's there holding things together. Faith's resource is anchored in the supernatural realm of the unseen more than the natural senses. Faith overrides natural senses to bring about a supernatural change. When the supernaturalness of faith collides with the naturalness of things, the natural is subject to change because it is temporal. There is more to life than what can be seen. Things that are seen were made of things that cannot be seen. What's visible came from what's invisible. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The supernatural in God's realm is the resource that affects change in the natural. Knowing that there is an unseen world is a great resource to rely upon in a time of afflictions. When afflictions come upon us, we need to look into an unseen world by faith to shape a change in a supernatural way. It's by faith that a person can look into the realm of the unseen world and ask God to change things around to shape the seen world. The resource of the unseen can give rest to stress and mess in the seen world. In short, the faith of the supernatural can bring forth a change in the natural. I know this sounds repetitive, but repetition deepens impression. We can use the resource of faith to speak blessings over our troubled finances, broken romances, and bad circumstances. Philemon 1 verse 6 says, that the communication of our faith may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that God has given to us in Christ Jesus. Not only for salvation in the hereafter, but faith for a new job, and more money for our living expenses, and ideas to profit in the here and now says Isaiah 48 verse 17 and 119 where God will show by the resource of faith make us eat of the good in the land by the resource of faith by the promises of God. See, 2 Peter 1 verses 3-4, and 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, where it says that by the promises of God we become partakers of the divine nature to lean on God's ability to us and through us by the resource of faith in an unseen world. Speaking God's word by the release of faith gives the believer authority to say the same thing that God's word says with boldness. Hebrews 13 verses 5-6 says, For he has said, For he has said, For he has said, so that we may boldly say, that we may boldly say, that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. God has said in His Word, that we may say boldly from His Word. We have the ability to release the power of the unseen world to shape things in the seen world. The Word of God formed by the tongue and spoken out our mouth becomes God's creative power and faith-filled words to reach into the unseen world to form a change. Faith-filled word is said from God's vocabulary which we put in our mouth to release faith in saying what God said out His mouth first. It is the use of faith-filled words spoken to unleash the creative power. The word of God spoken does what Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, God's word will accomplish its purpose and will not return void. 
Now here is our final PowerPoint. PowerPoint 3 that we must see. Write this down too. The weakest ink is stronger than the strongest memory. PowerPoint 3. The release of an unseen world. The release of the unseen world deals with putting faith to work. Faith is more than intellectual assent by belief. The release of faith calls corresponding action associated with the belief. We act because we believe. Faith is action based on belief, supported by confidence in what God promises. Real faith always moves out before it finds out how things are going to turn out. Faith speaks by the affirmations from God's Word. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13 says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe therefore I have spoken. The principles and operation of faith must be practiced to get a breakthrough of faith's release. 1. Don't let your faith be altered by appearance. Appearance is such a hindrance to faith's operation. We must fight what our senses tell us to keep faith in the evidence of things not seen but hoped for. 2. Don't let your faith be limited by logic. Logic is not contrary to faith, however, but faith does go beyond logic. Faith overrides logic. 3. Don't let your faith be fickled by your feelings. Feelings will hinder faith's operation if you let feeling dictate over faith. I would like to take this opportunity to give you a chance to live above sea level. It only takes your acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith to bring alive all His promises of salvation and more to make a change in your destiny for the good. Faith in Jesus can take you from the lowliness of sin's experiences, no matter how low it has dragged you down. Sin wants to take you further than you intend to go. Make you pay more than you intend to pay. And make you stay longer than you intend to stay. You can shift your eyesight to see above what your physical eye can see into an unseen world of faith unto the heights of holiness and salvation and beyond. Would you pray, Lord, Jesus? I desire to accept you as Lord of my life. Come into my heart as I confess my sins. I now turn away from my wrong to put my sins at the same place where I am now putting my faith. At the cross of Jesus Christ for a new destiny walk in His resurrection power. I need a change in my destiny. I now say that everlasting yes to Jesus to lead my life from the nasty here and now to the hereafter in faith. May the core of this message bind to my spirit, mind and soul for the everlasting experience in me be made one of God's faithful believers with the fruits of His performance in me by the Holy Spirit under Acts 2 verse 38. Amen. Have faith in God, He's King of earth and space, have faith in God, daily seek His face, have faith in God, He will save you by His grace. Let me close in prayer, Lord bind this message to the hearts of those who are listening to this Faith Clinic Fellowship Podcast. This is the time to say that everlasting, yes to Jesus and be saved. Mark 16 16 says, He that believes on the name Jesus and is baptized shall, be, saved, but he that believes not on the name Jesus shall, be, damned and lost. Now before I go I want you to notice that there are two B's in the Mark 16 verse 16 text. A B saved B and a be damned be. Question. Which, be, you be? Jesus is calling you out of the world to make you one of his own. We are called out of the world to live for him. Jesus. By Jesus' name. Isaiah 62 verse 12 says we were sought out. Psalm 40 verses 2 to 3 says we were brought out. Psalm 71 verse 6 says we were took out. Psalm 107 verse 3 says we were gathered out. John 10 verse 29 says, Once in a relationship with Jesus, nobody can pluck us out. I have preached faith as best as I know how in my own style under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Now I must stop here. I pray that you prayed with me. If you did there is a new name written down in glory. And that is your name. The blood of Jesus has slashed through your name to claim you in the family of God. God cannot see your wrongdoings through the blood of Jesus. The simple name. The strong name. The saving name. Jesus the supreme name. As I close please always remember that you don't have any problems. All you need is to have faith in God's wonder working. Power. Before we sign off I turn you to Sister Grace. 
We call forth now Sister Grace our Faith Clinic Fellowship announcer to give some news that we can use on support of God's work in saving souls to Jesus. Now here is Sister Grace. Hello podcast listener. I am Sister Grace the Faith Clinic Fellowship podcast announcer. I have some news that you can use on how you can help support the podcast outreach mission. We have a cash app that you that are will can send an offering of money support. It won't take long to cash app dollar sign t e r r y b r u n s o n 61 a pledge of support. It can be $1, $5, $10, $20, $50 $50 or more too. Cash app dollar sign t e r r y b r u n s o n 61. Your donation will leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. It will go into your future too to world a blessing in your favor is by the hand of God. Your offering is like a seed that will bloom into a harvest in your expectation. What do you expect from God? You are going to have to sow to grow it. Healing help, miracle money blessings. You can decree a thing and it shall be established to happen all because you decided to give a seed faith vow of ministry support. You can't buy a blessing but you can sow towards of God miracle harvest. John 3 verse 27 says God don't work nothing from heaven until something leaves the earth. John 3 verse 27 A man can receive nothing, except it be given him from heaven. You can be given a blessing by a seed gift of support. It won't take long to cash app dollar sign t e r r y b r u n s o n 61 a pledge of support. It can be $1, $5, $10, $20, $50 $50 or more. To cash app dollar sign t e r r y b r u n s o n 61. If you desire to rise up to the Rolex style of living, you're going to have to come off of the Timex way of giving. Make an uncommon vow of faith in money for an expected harvest. It won't take long to cash app dollar sign t e r r y b r u n s o n 61 a pledge of support. It can be $1, $5, $10, $20, $50 or more. To cash app dollar sign t e r r y b r u n s o n 61. You can give by a check or money order payable to Faith Clinic Fellowship. Mail your gift of support to 6254 North Beachwood Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 19138 is the zip code. You can give by a check or money order payable to Faith Clinic Fellowship. Mail your gift of support to 6254 North Beachwood Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 19138 is the zip code. This is Sister Grace the Faith Clinic Fellowship announcer saying God is ready to bless all you that are ready to give. Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all it shall be measured to you again. That is Luke 6 verse 38. And Job 22 verses 27 to 28 says, You shall make your prayer unto God, and he shall hear you. And when you reach in your pocket to pay a vow offering of support, you will also be able to decree a thing in a supernatural way and say what you want God to do for you. And it shall be established unto you in the way you say. That's what Job 22, 27 to 28, says word for word. Many are desirous to have from God without a sacrifice of money to his outreach cause to save souls to Jesus. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says it is God who gave you money to help establish his covenant of salvation in in the earth. Psalm 50 verse 5 says that we can gather our money together to give what we can. Our little can become much placed in the hand of God to make a covenant by a sacrifice pledge of support. It can be $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, or more to cash app dollar sign t e r r y b r u n s o n 61. Faith Clinic is committed to absolute financial accountability in using your donation gift to reach as many people as possible with the concept of faith in Jesus Christ to help people receive that which they believe they can have, do, and be in faith's ability through God. It won't take long to cash app dollar sign t e r r y b r u n s o n 61 a pledge of support. It can be $1, $5, $10, $20, $50 or more. 
to cash app dollar sign t e r r y b r u n s o n 61 you can give by a check or money order payable to faith clinic fellowship mail your gift of support to 6254 north beachwood street philadelphia pennsylvania 19138 is the zip code faith is like soch tape you cannot see it when you put it on but you know it is there holding whatever is broken together Use the scotch tape of faith to apply it to you broken situations. Until next time keep perfecting your faith in Jesus Christ. So long for now. We pray your return.